Caitlin is literally crying right now. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. <laughs> it absolutely lived up to, actually exceeded my expectations. Today we're taking you to the rugged and incredibly beautiful Italian Riviera coastline, the famous Cinque Terre, meaning quite literally five lands. These colorful towns, some seemingly hanging on the cliff sides above the blue waters of the Liguarian Sea, each have their own personality and appeal, all are worth visiting. We'll hike, eat, and sightsee our way through this beautiful Italian national park. First, taking a train to Corniglia, then hiking to Vernazza, hopping on another train to Monterosso, watching the sunset in Rio Maggiore, and finally taking a boat to the fifth town, Manarola. Plus, we'll show you two bonus towns we think are worth the effort and where you should stay for exploring one of the most picturesque places in all of Europe. We're Howard and Caitlin Newstate, dog people, food people, adventure people. We've been living on the road for the past three years, traveling through North America and beyond. Right now, we're taking you along on an epic, beautiful, and delicious journey across Italy. From coast to coast, city to town, by boat, train, and automobile, you're with us as we visit over a dozen places in this gorgeous country. This is a big learning experience for me. I am kind of out of my element here. <laughs> very glad that Howard is leading the way. Traveling by train in Italy is a great way to get acclimated to this style of travel. It is, after all, one of the easiest and most affordable ways to get around the country. Since Cinque Terre is closed to vehicular traffic unless you live there, taking a train into nearby La Spezia is a perfect option. After about four hours, we arrive to our home base for the next three days. We're here. Uh, let's go down the stairs. We made it to La Spezia, and first order of business was to get a Cinque Terre pass. That will allow us to hop on and off the train that will take us into the five towns. It was a very quick and easy process. It was 29 euros per person for two days of access. It's beautiful. We're not even really in town yet. I know. I mean, so the town of La Spezia is not part of Cinque Terre, but the thing to be aware of is it's much easier to get here than it is to any of the five cities, the five towns. So that's why we're staying here. The other part too is the prices are much less expensive here. Yeah, I was going to say, it came down to accommodations really. <laughs> Using a <laughs> roller bag suitcase on these like old cobblestone sidewalks is a little challenging. Caitlin, why don't you show us Okay, so I'll give you the grand tour. It's so cute. I think this is like an actual apartment building, but they took what was essentially one big apartment and converted it into, I think, five little hotel rooms. Home. So they've recently renovated everything. It's so nice. We're in the basil themed room. We have a big closet here. Safe down there. We've got a little workstation here. Refrigerator, place to put your suitcase. The bathroom is really big. Look at this. Yeah, look at the shower. I know, it's gorgeous. And then look, we have a little terrace where we're going to eat lunch. How cute is this? <laughs> Why? <laughs> it's just so beautiful. Caitlin is literally crying right now. <laughs> She's just so happy. Oh my god, just look at this. Spezia isn't really known for being one of the like hot spots for tourists, but I'm just like, how can you not be amazed walking down here and seeing all of this? It's true. As a major port city in Italy, Spezia doesn't really get its due. It is where cruise ships come. It is where a large portion of the Italian Navy is based, and it is a city of 90,000. It doesn't necessarily have the clusters of painted buildings and things like that, but it is a very beautiful coastal city. Okay, we got our to-go pizza. 
and it looks and smells amazing, but there's one little problem. It's uh, it's not cut, because in Italy they don't cut pizza. So. So luckily we have our trusty Leatherman, and so I'm going to now cut the pizza with a multi-tool. <laughs> All the pizza names were hilarious. There was like Lady Gaga, we got the Miss Piggy, there was Ginger Rogers. And so ours is uh, mortadella, mozzarella, buffalo, pistachio, pesto. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Not the weirdest thing I've ever done. Whew. All right, we made it on the train and now we are finally on our way to Cinque Terre. And Howard, where are we going first? Coniglia, because we arbitrarily decided we we're gonna go there first. There are five towns, obviously, in the name, and we're going to the one basically in the middle, and we're going to kind of do, I guess, the upper or the northernmost towns first, and see how far we get. Howard, how long was that train? Whew, long. It's like 12 minutes total. Okay, so you can climb the 360 plus steps, or you can take the shuttle like we did, and you don't have to wait at all. You don't feel out of breath. It's awesome. <laughs> it's included with the ticket. So the ticket that we purchased, which covers us for both days, is train plus bus plus all of the trails. Wow. Just look at this little street. Oh, it just smells so good walking down this alley. I smell like garlic and it's pizza. <laughs> We gotta look at the shops! I don't even know which way we're going. We're just walking and everything is so beautiful. I think it's our first view of the ocean. Correction, it's the sea. We will now okay, see oh. the sea. Oh, wow. Right in the middle of Cinque Terre is Corniglia. It's the only one of the five towns that doesn't have direct access from the sea. The water is so clear. An ancient Roman village that was rich in agriculture, it's set a bit high on the hills and surrounded on all sides by picturesque vineyards and olive groves. It's the smallest of the five, and there aren't any hotels here. A few bed and breakfasts offer accommodations to travelers looking for a quieter and more authentic experience. The centerpiece of Corniglia is the 18th century town square, now dotted with tables and chairs for nearby cafes, and the backdrop to it all is the historic church that's certainly worth a visit. So because this entire area is a national park, one of the big draws is the hiking here. That's true. However, because of landslides and such, a lot of times the trails can be closed. And between the five towns here, only one of them is open right now. <laughs> And we're gonna be taking that one. It's supposed to take about an hour and a half for us to hike from Corniglia to Vernazza. I've seen mixed things on the difficulty level of the trail. We have tennis shoes on. We did not bring hiking boots or anything like that. No, so. but from what we've been told, as long as you have good sturdy shoes, uh, you should be fine. Okay, so that was it. We had to show our pass uh, because otherwise you do need a ticket to hike along these main paths. So excited. Oh my god, look at this. Wow. What you doing, Howard? Layering, Caitlin. Layering. Yeah, it warmed up fast. Too. Yeah, October's here. <laughs> 250 meters down, 2,500 to go. Okay. <laughs> Hiking on this trail, it's very easy to see how landslides and damage and closures can happen because they click just right on the edge of the cliff here. What do we have here? Is this an oasis? Is this heaven? <laughs> this is the mirage. <laughs> There's a little restaurant right here. So the instructions say that you're supposed to find your seat and then the strongest of your group then hikes down into town a little bit further, gets your drinks, and then comes back up here. Okay. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That was a nice break. That was great. Now that we're starting to head down into Vernazza, I made an observation. I'm very glad that we came the way we did, going from Corniglia to Vernazza. 
because our uphill was a little bit more gradual. If we had done it in the reverse, this uphill would have been brutal. We've seen a lot of people who are really struggling. <laughs> so I'm feeling very glad. All right. We made it. Town. Oh my gosh, I'm in shock. It's so beautiful. Avernatza, one of the most iconic towns in Cinque Terre, with its medieval castle high atop a hill jutting out into the water and a harbor full of colorful boats. It's a postcard waiting to happen, but they all are, as you'll soon see. For us, this was a great second stop. We grabbed an incredible seafood lunch to refuel after the hike. Pesto, fresh tuna. Mm. The tuna is seared. It's delicious. Oh, wow. This is the squidding pasta with shrimp and mussels. Oh, wow. Oh my God, it's so fresh and delicious. And then we headed to the waterfront, which is a hot spot for sunbathers and just a great place to sit and take in all the epic views. And if you're feeling up to it, you can climb the steps to the medieval castle for even more incredible sightseeing. All right, we made it all the way to the top. We got our ticket, it's two euro a person. And it is not included in the pass. There are 15,000 signs that tell you this. <laughs> so make sure you have two euro per person. So I can see the hiking trail way up there where we came from. And then I can see, I believe that's Corniglia where we hiked from. Mm -hmm. Wow. But we get to take trains the rest of the day. <laughs> so gelato time? Yes. It's a trick question. It's always gelato time. I got cafe and stracciatella, which I forget what it is. <laughs> Who looks good? Wow. Beach? Yeah. Welcome to the largest of the five villages, Monterosso. If you're looking to splash in the Liguarian Sea while on holiday in Cinque Terre, then you've come to the right place. This is the only town with a large beach and even in mid-October, people were swimming and sunbathing. There are two sections to Monterosso. The newer, more vibrant part was pretty busy and filled with shops, restaurants, and hotels. It's also unique because it's easily accessible by vehicle, unlike the others, and we found quite the surprise. <gasps> oh my gosh. We're going to check out all the RVs because there are probably 15 or 20 here. Oh my god, look at the little pasta eggs. Oh. What do you think, Kevin? I think it's super cool. <laughs> just like all parts here. Yeah. Okay, so I just got the lowdown from uh, our brethren in Europe. Uh, the guy said that it's 25 euro per night which he felt was kind of expensive uh, for a dry camping. And I would kind of agree, but I mean, this is right on the beach. It's kind of amazing. The sand is like right there. I mean, huh. I, remember this. I know it's not a bad place if we were, you know, if we were to say travel around Europe in an RV. Food all day long. <laughs> it's my kind of sign. Okay, Lynn, what if I told you that according to the internet, the best focaccia in this entire area is located here. I would say, let's go get it. Okay, so we asked the man himself, we said, what is his favorite? And he said, just plain focaccia. So that's what we got with rosemary. And then we got um, cheese stuffed bread. Because <laughs> he said it was also really good. I have been eating all the bread and pasta, and so far so good. I have been feeling totally fine. Everybody said that the pasta and bread here is very different from the US. They do have gluten-free options here, but I wanted to try it and see, and it's been fine. Yeah, I actually found an entire tour of the whole area for gluten-free. Right, so if you have a, an actual severe allergy, just know that there are places that you can eat here and have wonderful food. Definitely. For me, it's more of an intolerance in the US, and yeah. Oh my goodness, look at all that cheese. Mm. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Cheese is dripping. The best focaccia in all the land. Wow. It's beautiful. It does look beautiful. Wow. That's a little behind the scenes for you. <laughs> 
texture of this is perfect. Some. It's like crispy on the top and like super chewy on the inside. Oh man. I don't think you'll like this, Caitlin. Mmm. Oh, no rosemary on top. It's real good. This is another Howard special telling me that we have to climb to the top of this mountain for like this epic secret view. Make no mistake, if you are steps averse, this is not the area of Italy that you want to be in. <laughs> there are stairs upon stairs upon stairs. But man, is it beautiful. What, Caitlin? Say it. Like it, there's a train coming. You're not gonna be able to hear me. Say it, say it loud and proud, Caitlin. Howard was right. There's nobody up here and the views are spectacular. Wow. Yeah. You can see all the towns we're at today. The sun has gone behind the mountain here in Monte Rosso, so we're gonna hop back on the train and uh, take about, what, a 15 minute ride to the first town, which is Rio Maggiore. And kind of walk around there and see what we can see. I bet we're gonna see stuff. <laughs> I bet it, there's things to see. It really is interesting that all the towns are so different and they're all just like a couple miles apart. All right, this is town four. Today. I know, we're just knocking them out. Rio Maggiore, one of the best towns to watch the sunset. The vibrant buildings seemingly propped against each other get more vibrant with the glow of the sinking sun. Wow, that was awesome to see yeah. sunset right there. We made it just in time. It's beautiful. <laughs> this town was probably lowest priority on our list because a few different blogs we read called it, and I quote, the least picturesque and said to visit if you have time. Yeah, we don't really get that either. Some of our favorite pictures of the trip came from this spot high above the narrow port. We walked around and then grabbed some more delicious seafood. Wow. Calamari. Before taking the eight minute ride back to La Spezia. Welcome to Porta Banana. This is another beautiful coastal town here in the area. This is about, I want to say halfway maybe, uh, on the road between La Spezia and the first of the Cinque Terre. Oh, we had to take a bus to get here. You can take a boat, a bus. Those are your only two options. Boat or bus. A boat or a bus, or you can drive. <laughs> it is definitely an adventure to get here, but from what I've read, this is kind of like a hidden gem. Not a lot of people come here because obviously it is not nearly as popular as some of the nearby towns. So let's go check it out. I'm getting Porta Venere style octopus. Uh, what did you get, Caitlin? It's up right here. Prosciutto, um, artichokes, yeah. and anchovies. Yeah, love anchovies. an entire curtain made out of pasta and on one of the blogs that Howard was reading it was kind of like a scavenger hunt thing see if you can find the elusive pasta curtain we happen to find it like on one of our first stops look at this so cool it's beautiful <laughs> I love it <laughs> all right mm. we went into the pasta curtain place and got a little treat Howard asked her what her favorite was and she said this one with lemon we are in the land of lemon so Sounds I think it's good. gonna be good if you haven't figured out already, this area of Italy is really famous for its food. Oh wow. Howard, oh, you won't like it. No? No. Be the judge of that, please. Mmm. <laughs> oh. It's like a... Mm. It's like, you know those those wafer cakes? It's like Both that. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Might stay in Italy forever. For the pastries? For all of it. And to work off all that delicious food, make sure you climb the steps to the Gothic style Church of St. Peter. The church itself is stunning. That's beautiful. I really like the white and black stripes of the churches in this area. There's something like so simple and elegant about it. It's very, very beautiful. And you'll get incredible views of the rugged coastline and the port below. Look at these rocks. They're all just like, like jumbled and piled here. It's amazing. We spent about two hours here before it was time to catch our boat to the fifth town in Cinque Terre, Manarola. We picked up our boat tickets. They are 14 euro a piece, one way. This will take us uh, from here into the park.
kid and living our best life. <laughs> On a boat in the Italian sea. All right, we made it to our fifth and final town, Manarola. This is the other town we'd highly recommend for sunset. And if you're looking for those super Instagrammable shots, we have a hot tip. Nusundorma is a really famous restaurant. Uh, and it obviously has this beautiful overlook. However, if you take the pathway just to the right of it, you can actually go above it. And that's where we captured a whole bunch of beautiful shots. Yeah, the views are maybe a little bit better and they're totally free. Now they don't have drinks. <laughs> No. In fairness, you have to bring your own flask. Still want to find some lemon jello. Let's do it. Okay, we have a new friend here. Oh. Helping us say goodbye to Cinque Terre. Yeah, this has been absolutely amazing. And we even shared six different towns, even though there are only five. <laughs> I know you got a bonus town out of us. <laughs> it absolutely lived up to, actually exceeded my expectations of what it was going to be like. It's even more beautiful in person. And don't let anybody fool you, October is perfectly fine. We had heard that because of the weather and all that, that it could be kind of bad, but to be honest with you, it's no problem. Perfect, it was yeah. perfect. Yeah. But we're getting ready to say goodbye to one town and on to the next. Mm -hmm. The land, Parmesan cheese. Well, and a lot more. <laughs> we're heading to Parma tomorrow. Parma tomorrow. <laughs> That's what